So what we are going to look at now is finding the solubility of a salt. So what we want to be able to do is, given a KSP, be able to find the concentrations of the species involved in a salt at its saturation point or equilibrium. So one of the main problems here is that these concentrations are going to be related to the stoichiometry. And what we want to do is come up with a number that is independent of stoichiometry. So for insoluble salts, what we're going to find is what's called the molar solubility, or S. So this is just another value. It's very similar to the X value that we were looking at in uh, finding concentrations of acids and bases. But we call it S because we were dealing with an um, insoluble salt. So th this is the idea that to be able to talk about the solubility of a salt is kind of a difficult term. Um, and it's really kind of hard to um, compare one salt to another one. But what we want to be able to find is what's called a molar solubility. And once we find the molar solubility S, we can find the concentrations of the ions in solution from our insoluble salt. So here we're looking at calcium fluoride, and I say I have a saturated solution. So I've added uh, calcium fluoride solid into an aqueous solution, and I've allowed it to reach equilibrium, so it is dissolved as much as possible. And now what I want to find is S, the molar solubility, and then from that I'm going to use the molar solubility to find the concentration of um, calcium and fluoride in solution. As always, I need the solubility product, which is a constant for calcium fluoride. And the first thing I want to do is come up with the reaction, the disassociation that comes in. Uh, I know that calcium fluoride is going to disassociate to make uh, Ca2 plus plus 2F minus. And just like our other equilibrium, this stoichiometry means that there is a two to one ratio of these species in solution. So the, my concentration of F minus is gonna be twice as large as my concentration of uh, calcium two plus. So that comes from the stoichiometry. So if I assume that some amount S disassociates, then I know that S amount of calcium two plus is gonna be made and two S is going to be made of the fluoride. So this is always going to be true because we're always going to be starting with an insoluble salt. We're going to assume that some amount of it S is disassociating and then it's going to make S amount of the products and then we carry down the stoichiometric coefficient. So here there's an applied one, here there's an applied two. So we are going to be making two S. So you can see the idea is that um, um, I, when I talk about the solubility that the sto stoichiometry is going to have an effect on these concentrations. So it's very difficult to look at the concentration of a species and say, you know, that's my solubility. So we tend to look at S, this amount that disassociates from the insoluble salt, and call that the molar solubility because that is completely independent of stoichiometry at this point. So how we find this, so once we have our disassociation reaction, I come up with my solubility product. So it's products divided by reactants. Remember, in a solubility product, the solid does not show up. And as always, we want to multiply by the stoichiometric coefficient. So the KSP for this reaction is equal to the concentration of calcium times the concentration of fluoride squared. And in this case, just like we've done in other equilibrium, we're going to take this uh, algebraic idea and plug it into my equilibrium expression. So if I put S in for Ca2 plus and 2S in for F minus, I get this um, algebraic expression. And so this is the main thing. We're going to combine this together and solve for S. But one of the main mistakes people misunderstand is that this bracket around 2S is being squared. So S is being squared, but so is the 2. And so this is a very common mistake is people tend to make mistakes when uh, raising the stoichiometry to some power inside of these solubility products. So I have S here, and then I have two, uh, S squared here. So S times 2S gives me 3S, but then it's multiplied by 2 squared. So KSP is equal to 4S uh, cubed in this case. So I want to be able to solve for S. S is going to give me these concentrations of the species, and S is called the molar solubility. So you plug in the, these algebraic expressions. You combine them together to get um, uh, KSP is equal to some number times S raised to some power. And so in this case, KSP is equal to 4 times S cubed, and then I solve for S. So I take my KSP, that number was right here, and I divide by 4, and now i got to take the cube root of this whole number. So this is uh, one of the more trickier parts, is that you need to be able to raise um, certain values to a, a known power or take a known root. So this should be... Um, 
the root, uh, and it, the, it, this is just a, a function. So remember, um, the cube root is a function. It just means I'm taking some number in and getting some number out. On your calculator, this should have um, the symbol for like a square root. It's a root symbol, and it should have a Y in the, inside of there. In my calculator, I enter in the number, then I hit the function, and then I hit three. That means I'm taking the cube root, and then I hit um, calculate, and it gives me this number out. So you need to make sure that you understand how to take cube roots, fourth roots, and here in a second, we're gonna look at a more advanced situation of this. So you need to be able to raise certain numbers to a given power or take a given root. So in solving for S here, I take KSP divided by four, then I take that entire number and take a cube root. I get S is equal to 1.1 times 10 to the minus third molar. So that's the molar solubility. And then I got to look at how the molar solubility relates to the uh, concentration of my species. So the concentration of calcium 2 plus is equal to S. So I, I just found out what, that, what S is. That's going to be equal to my concentration of calcium 2 plus, 1.1 times 10 to the minus third molar. But with F minus, I, the concentration F minus is going to be equal to 2S. So I take my value for S that I've calculated right here and I multiply it by 2. Um, the concentration of F minus is going to be 2.2 times 10 to the minus third. And you can see this, that we made this assumption earlier on that the concentration of F2 minus, uh, excuse me, of F minus is going to be twice as large as calcium 2 plus. And we see that here. Um, the reason why is there is two fluorides inside of calcium fluoride. So it's going to produce a concentration of F minus that is twice as large as calcium 2 plus. So um, you need to take a minute and remember that this solubility is independent of the amount of the solid. So I have to assume when I talk about this equilibrium that I'm putting enough calcium fluoride in to reach this equilibrium. But once I've reached a saturation point, by that I mean that I cannot dissolve more uh, calcium fluoride into solution. So I've made the maximum amount of calcium 2 plus and F minus. Adding more solid to this solution will not increase my concentrations of calcium 2 plus and F minus. And this is part of the reason why uh, calcium fluoride, the solid, is not inside of my equilibrium expression. So adding more solid doesn't change my equilibrium values of calcium 2 plus and F minus. So um, that's one of the things you want to remember. Um, it does not, as long as we have enough calcium fluoride to reach our equilibrium amounts, adding more calcium fluoride will not cause more calcium fluoride to dissolve into solution. So here we've reached the equilibrium values. and. Because we understand that, because of this fact, we can say that KSP is equal to my solubility product or equilibrium expression right here. So let's look at a more uh, difficult situation here. So we're going to be looking at um, magnesium phosphate and coming up with the molar solubility and um, the solubility product or the equilibrium expression. So I give you this. I say it's saturated solution. So it's the same thing as saying at equilibrium. Um, I, I tell you that we're dealing with magnesium phosphate. I give you the solubility, um, KSB for uh, magnesium phosphate. And really what I wanna find is at um, equilibrium or saturation point, what's gonna be my concentration of magnesium two plus and um, my, my phosphate um, anion here. So the first thing I wanna do is look at the disassociation reaction. So when magnesium phosphate disassociates, what does it break up into? So remember that this subscript three here means that there are three magnesiums inside of um, solution. So we make three magnesiums and then this two outside the brackets, remember it's PO4 is my phosphate, PO4 three minus. We have the brackets and then a subscript two, that means we are making two phosphates. So when magnesium phosphate disassociates, it makes three magnesiums and two phosphates. So when we want to find the molar solubility, we once again assume um, S is disassociating from my insoluble salt. And in this case, uh, it's going to be making a certain amount of magnesium and phosphate. We put down S and then we bring down the stoichiometric coefficient. So for disassociating S amount of magnesium phosphate, we're going to make 3S of magnesium 2 plus and 2S of my phosphate. I then want to find my solubility product the equilibrium expression. Remember it's products divided by reactants. So my products are magnesium and phosphate. The reactant is a solid, it doesn't make it into it. And then we wanna to raise to the stoichiometric coefficient. So if there's a three in front of magnesium, so this is gonna be raised to the third power, two in front of phosphate, so this is gonna be raised to the second power. 
Then I'm going to take this algebraic idea and plug those values into my solubility product. So 3S for magnesium, it goes right there, 2S for phosphate. And this is a little bit more of an advanced situation, so sometimes these solubility products can get into some kind of interesting calculations. But if I look at this, my magnesium 3S um, uh, to the third power, uh, that's going to give me S to the third power and then 3 to the third power, which is going to be 27s to the third power. Same thing here, I have 2s, but I'm squaring it. That's gonna be equal to 4s squared when I carry this out and um, carry the, the exponent out to the two um, species inside of there. So if I multiply this all together, I need to take 27 times four, that's gonna be the number out in front of my s value here. I have 3s, um, or s to the third power here, times s squared, that's gonna give me 5s for my um, solubility product. So KSP is equal to 108 S to the fifth power. So I wanna do the same thing. I wanna find out what S is. KSP was given, I divide by 108, then I take the fifth root. So once again, this is a function on your calculator. You need to make sure you know how to do it. I take one times 10 to the minus 25th divided by 108, and then um, it's a function. You press the function, then you hit five, and then you hit enter. It takes the fifth root of it, you get 3.9 times 10 to the minus six molar. Once we find out what S is, so this is the S value, we know that um, concentration of magnesium is three times S. So we just found out what S is. Three times S is 1.2 times 10 to the minus fifth. Two times S is the concentration of phosphate, 7.8 times 10 to the minus six. So with this, the example is that the more complex the salt, the the more complex the solubility product calculation becomes, and you need to, uh, to make sure you understand how to make your calculator take a fifth root of something.